Right? The old lady, she went to Walmart and brought the provisions. Came back to a car, out of the car, and she's about to start the car. Suddenly, a thief got into the car on the passenger side and sat down. And he said, give me the money, whatever you have. I have a gun, I'll shoot you otherwise. The lady said, no. The man said, if you don't give me, I'm going to shoot you. The lady again said, no. He said again, if you don't give me the money, I want the gun, I'm going to kill you right away. He said, no. And she said, you don't know who's with me. Jesus travels with me wherever I go. He's right now in my car. Do you understand this? And you are doing a wrong thing. You have to ask for forgiveness from Jesus. If you prefer to ask for forgiveness, you'll forgive me. Otherwise, you know, it's not good for you. As she was speaking like this, this man, this young man, began to cry. She didn't say anything, she didn't use any special words, just said these words, and he began to cry. And she said, I'm sorry. I don't know, because I didn't have anything, that's why I did like this. She said, doesn't matter. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm going. He began to leave and went to the car to call him and come in. She had uh, just ten dollars left with her. And she took it out and said, take this. Use it. And he received it, kissed her, and thanked her and went away. And uh, this was published and the news reporter asked the lady, how could you do this? And this lady said, not only I have saved from what I have done, not my life is saved, but I know that man has changed because what I have done is transformed. I get a message from this, what she has done is, she risked her life to show love to him. She risked her life, anyone can kill anybody in America, it's not a difficult thing. And she showed love to him, she told the truth without fear. And when she told the truth, he received the truth. And because she told with passion, she knew that Jesus was with her in her car, and she told it very, very confidently because she had faith in the Lord whom she served. And she's 90 years old and she's driving a car. I want to understand what kind of health she is in. And the secret for that is nothing but Lord Jesus Christ whom she's serving. And she had the compassion and love for this man and to tell him, I'm not giving you money, you have to repent. In that situation, how many of us will have such a kind of presence of mind to talk like this? We'll hear, maybe we'll shout, we'll fear, we'll do all the right of give, whatever we will do everything, not only money, everything we'll try to give him. But she had the presence. Because I can understand in my heart the news reporter did not talk about it, but I understand she had confidence in the Lord whom she served. Hallelujah. And she had the love that God had poured into her was so strong she never feared even to die. Amen. That God we serve. And this God is good God. Amen. And this beautiful testimony that we heard just now. It's amazing testimony. Yes, mother went through hard time, but she come every week to church. In her face there was glory. I saw it. She spoke to me every week, and we talked to each other. And I know she'll speak to me. She never cried here. I know she was going through agony, but then she had the faith. And our God is a God who is faithful towards those who have faith. And I thank God for Joshua said, whatever life we had in the past, Maybe that was something else. The great thing is, he's not only really changed, he began to preach the gospel mm -hmm. and share the love of Jesus Christ with the people inside. Mm -hmm. And he will never be the same. There's a prophecy on his life. He's going to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's going to serve the Lord like no one else. You cannot imagine what he's going to do in the days to come. And this, and this came to my heart a few, few months ago. I shared not once, two, three times. I told his mother also. This man is separated. Whatever he is today, she used to worry about, about his lifestyle. He said, whatever it is, he's going to serve God. Amen. And Joshua, you're going to do that. Amen. That's what God is going to do in your life. Amen. Praise be to God. Let's go to work God this evening. I'm going to go in a different style today. I'm going to expound the word of God. 
episode of Job, first episode of Job. And we're going to go through the world, first chapter, maybe second chapter, to some extent, and we'll go quickly. <coughs> I want you to hear the word clearly and catch up some important things that God is going to speak to us. And how many of you remember Jeevan's message, last week's message? If you don't remember anything, if you remember one thing, that's what I remember. And that change, not change, that's what my desire. Pray with traveling pain in your heart for those who are perishing. Unless you experience the love of God inside of you, that kind of love will not come out of you. And that's the message. And we heard many messages about the coming of the Lord. And those messages have come in right time for us because the Lord is surely coming soon. I have been preparing a whole week a different message to tell you one more time the Lord is really coming soon. I was going to tell you some, some proofs, some scriptures. I prepared all those things and I shared that in Dubai last week. The Lord, yesterday, I sat down and was crying out to the Lord. I want to do exactly what you want me to do. I don't want to do anything else. He said, change the message. Speak what I'm telling you. What did you tell me what to say? Lord, tell me what I should say. And I don't anything. I was waiting. He just told me, read first epistle of John. He just told me that. And the message will come into your heart. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm going to share with you this evening. So let's, and this is very much in line with what we have been doing. You'll understand it, why God wants to talk to us this evening. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. I quickly read, is telling, whatever we are saying, we have experienced it immensely, without any question, without any doubt. We have seen it, we have felt it, we have experienced the manifestation of God in our own life. And that's what we are sharing with you. Means, when he's telling this, we as believers, who are only believers here, should not have any question and doubt about the love of God that was manifested, the life of God that was manifested in the lifetime of His disciples. They met Him, they felt Him, they knew Him. That's the reason they never cared when their life was a Christian. They gave their life provided, were ready to die. They knew what was going to happen to them. They never loved, loved their life on earth. They began to ponder what they would have in the days to come. And that's why when the people came to kill them, they never came. They just gave themselves freely to die. Because they know they are better. We as believers, most of the times, we live for the day, for the life of this earth, more than for the life that's going to be coming into us. The great blessing that I kept for us, if you walk in the Spirit, second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, the things which have been kept for us are not revealed. We don't know that. And we don't understand. Nobody can understand except those who are of His, who are His children. For them, it has been revealed through the Spirit of God. If you are a person walking in the Spirit, you will be able to see the kingdom that is yet to come. Let me go forward. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, John is writing with one intent, that everyone who reads this epistle must have fellowship with the Father in heaven. I do not know how many of us here have a real fellowship with God. Maybe every one of us here are praying every day and reading His Word. But the fellowship, you know what is fellowship? Fellowship is something like this. When I meet my brother, 
Maaf dan 